All right, let's get started. We're gonna start off with a stretch for that flying pigeon. Of course, you can do regular pigeon if you want, but it's nice to work from this balancing position here. You wanna get that shin up as high as you can. And if you can push your arms and legs strongly together, you can lift up like this. It will really help when you try to balance on your hands. Right? Now I'm going a little fast just so I can kind of demo everything. So when you set your shin, get up high up on your arms, up towards the armpit, and really hook your ankle and dorsiflexion. And if you brace your shin and arms strongly together, you'll get that lift. And having those really strong active legs helps big time with the arm balance. All right. So next thing we can do is we can work on our flying pigeon from a tripod headstand, actually. A little bit easier to balance with three points of contact. So when you come up into your tripod, make sure your arms aren't too far apart and just set up that figure four and really wedge that shin up into your arms and practice extending the leg. Again, I'm going quite fast just to kind of demo everything on both sides. You should wedge up into the arms and then extend the leg and hold for maybe 20 to 30 seconds. All right, that'll come in handy um, later, all right? And then for funsies, you might practice pushing out of your tripod headstand into crow. That will really strengthen your wrists and fingers and improve your balance. All right, so next thing we'll do is we'll set up for that flying pigeon. So we're gonna go to that first balance we did, kind of like cross-legged chair pose. And you really wanna crease at the hips. So I keep my torso really long to really wedge the shin and knee up high. And just like you're loading in, to crow, I'm going to keep the knee bent at first before you extend the leg. Extending that leg back is much harder, so if you're having troubles with it, just practice with that knee bent in, and it'll be a little bit easier, and over time we can work on extending the leg. On the other side, you can see how strongly, again, the ankles and dorsiflexion to really hook around the arm. I got way up into the armpit. Take your time extending that back leg and keep it active. All right. Again, I'm kind of whizzing through these kind of fast. You're going to want to hold these a little bit longer. Maybe go five breaths, 10 breaths, 20 seconds, 30 seconds, 60 seconds, however long. If flying pigeon is getting easier and steadier for you, then we can try some other ways to go about it. We could enter in from that tripod headstand. How do we get to tripod headstand? Well, let's take a little sun salutations kind of flow and from down dog, Maybe we step or maybe we just hop and float into a tripod headstand like so. Do your little figure four, wedge legs in there, lift that back leg and then lift your head and push everything as far away from the floor as you can. All right, here we go on the other side. Push and lift and then either lift up to Bakasana Crow or just push it back to Malasana Squat. Pushing out of those tripod headstands, either into your crow or into your flying pigeons, can really up your uh, arm balance game. And next level, once we vinyasa through to down dog, is maybe we, we skip the headstand and we just float right into Ekapada Galavasana flying pigeon pose. If that's kind of tricky, work on first just floating into your crow pose. From Flying Pigeon, you can hit that one-legged crow. It's a really nice setup, and that's really good practice for your arm balance as well. And as you can see, I'm obviously taking care of my wrists and shoulders in between each side. And so when we try it on the other side, if you're having troubles with this, maybe just shorten your down dog stance so you don't have to jump as far. You can have a kind of a shallower down dog stance, and then you don't have to jump as far to hit that flying pigeon pose. All right, again, having really strong active legs is gonna help with this pose. Everything's working hard. If you're feeling good with this pose, try working your way to that one-legged crow pose with that back leg extended. And that opens up a lot of fun little transitions from there. Now I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, Reno, there's gotta be more we can do with this pose. And you're absolutely right. We can take our flying pigeon and we can play with that back leg. Instead of extending the leg back behind us, we can sweep it 
off to the side or even out in front of us once you decide which direction you want to face. It's going to really help if you stretch out your hamstrings and calves here first. But as you can see, you can just kind of sweep that leg out in front. I'm a big fan of standing on the hands. Uh, palms down feels better to me. Same way you'd set up your hands for a peacock pose. That's a really nice follow-up. And just shaking out the arms. Another good way to prep for this would be maybe working on your Birds of Paradise. Uh, pose or your front splits to really get that flexibility. Again, you sweep that leg out in front, pointing your toes gives you a little more slack in the calf to lift up the leg as high as you can. And uh, that's a pretty fun little transition there. And then, of course, if you got it, finish with the press all the way up and then tuck your head to get that nice straight line if you're working on your handstand.